Uh, we can cross now to Brussels and speak to Dave Keating, our correspondent covering um, the EU angle on this story. Dave, thanks for joining us. Do we know this hour what it is we should expect from Joseph Borrell? Well, I think the main focus they're going to have is on the refugee situation. Moldova is being totally overwhelmed by refugees uh, coming from the Ukraine war. It is a small country with not a lot of resources. So I think what we can expect is Borrell will announce EU assistance in the, in the form of monetary aid for Moldova to help process those refugees. It is uh, right now the third, it's receiving the third most amount of Ukraine refugees of all uh, countries at the moment. Poland is getting about 52 percent, then Hungary about 13 percent, uh, and Slovakia and Moldova uh, equal about 8 percent. But the other thing they're going to talk about today is the military situation, the security situation. There are a lot of nerves on edge about the breakaway region of Transnistria. It runs along most of the Moldovan border with Ukraine. It, uh, many, many years ago, there was a war between Moldova and this breakaway region, and for many years it has been self-administered, internationally recognized as part of Moldova, but self-administered, and there have been Russian, quote, peacekeeping troops in that region. There are great fears that that could be the flashpoint between NATO and Russia. Moldova is not a member of NATO, but it is mostly Romanian-speaking, and many inhabitants of Moldova have Romanian passports. If Russia tries to annex Transnistria and Moldova responds and Moldova is attacked, the question is, does Romania try to protect those Romanian passport holders. So a lot to discuss both in terms of the uh, refugee situation and in the security situation at that possible flashpoint at the Ukrainian border. As you said, lots to discuss today in Moldova, Dave. Um, on the refugee angle, though, we also have Charles Michel today. He's on the Polish border. That, of course, is an EU uh, member state. And it's just another example, isn't it, of uh, the EU leadership in Brussels trying to show solidarity to those countries bordering Ukraine, taking in so many people right now. Yeah, for sure. As I mentioned, Poland is bearing the brunt of this refugee wave. 52 percent of the roughly 850,000 Ukrainian refugees who have fled the country so far. Uh, so they are trying to help with assistance at that border in terms of processing. You now, already the EU has waived visa requirements. Already Ukrainians could enter the EU without a visa even before the war on a tourist visa of 90 days. But the EU has said you can now enter, no questions asked, for up to three years without having to claim asylum. So the refugees are coming into Poland without a problem. It's leaving Ukraine that's proving a bit more of a problem that's causing a lot of the backup because Ukraine wants to register everyone who's left and they need to. They're keeping men of fighting age in the country. Uh, and so they need to make sure that the men who are able to fight aren't leaving the country. And now railways across Europe are giving free travel to these Ukrainian refugees to try to spread the burden, to have them keep going west. So uh, someone coming into Poland right now can travel all the way to here to Belgium for free, uh, crossing across the uh, Polish railway, the German railway, and the Belgian railway, which are all giving them free travel. People across Europe are volunteering to take Ukrainian refugees into their homes. I think that people don't want to allow Poland or any of these other border EU states to become completely overwhelmed. And there is an impetus to share the burden. And we'll hear that, I'm sure, from President Michel at his visit today. Dave Keating, thanks very much indeed. Uh